How you doing, Star Wars fans? This is Star Wars Only. Today we're doing another film commentary for the second episode of the Star Wars Saga in the Skywalker Saga leading up to The Rise of Skywalker coming out this December, Attack of the Clones. I'll admit, not entirely looking forward to this one, but the good news is I brought some rum and some whiskey, so I'll be able to have a really good time enjoying this movie and watching this movie with you. If you don't know what a film commentary is, Basically, it's me talking over the film as I watch it, and if you want to watch Attack of the Clones or any of the other films that I'm covering, all you have to do is plug it in, get it ready to go, and listen to me in the background as you watch the film. We're starting from the 20th Century Fox logo, so if you're watching the film, if you're watching it on DVD, make sure you get to right at that point when the 20th Century Fox logo starts, pause it, and then start with me. I'm about to get it ready in a second. Let me get everything set up real quick. So I'm at the 20th Century Fox logo right before the theme song for it starts, before it does a little drum roll, so get it there, and I'm going to start it in a few seconds here. Alright, ready? In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, here we go. Uh, I do admit, I miss 20th Century Fox being the distributor of the Star Wars movies. It's so iconic having this theme song right before the opening of the films. Now it's just pitch quiet. You ever watch the new films, the sequels in theaters? It's just pitch quiet. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. You know, I haven't seen Attack of the Clones in a good three to four years. It's going to be interesting watching it now that I'm older and more into film than I was when I last watched it and taking film classes and whatnot. Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. There's unrest in the Galactic Senate. Several thousand solar systems have declared their intentions to leave the Republic. <sighs> Back to the politics, I see. Uh, the Separatist movement, under the leadership of the mysterious Count Dooku, has made it difficult for the limited number of Jedi Knights to maintain peace and order in the galaxy. Senator Amidala, the former Queen of Naboo, is returning to the Galactic Senate to vote on the critical issue of creating an Army of the Republic, well, I don't know why that was in all caps, but to assist the overwhelmed Jedi. Hmm. Y'all created a, a Republic of multiple systems, but no one thought to create an army to defend yourself. So that's an odd way to do business. I'm gonna go ahead and start drinking. Right now I'm drinking what they call Lucky Irishman, which is whiskey mixed with Irish cream, which is also alcohol. Really good if you got some ice with it and everything. Now this is the only Star Wars film that I think opens with a, at least in the prequels, it, the shot that goes up. And it's upside down too, you see them turning. It's kinda cool. If I'm drunk by the end of this, please don't blame me. I like how when they go over the clouds, you can see the shadows on them. And they are landing. You know, what's crazy about this film is it is the first film ever to be completely filmed on digital technology, like digital cameras, instead of actually using film stock. This was the first movie of its kind. And I think looking back on it, it's just kind of crazy to think that this started the digital revolution in the film industry. Boom, you were wrong. There was danger. And another Wilhelm screen. You gotta get that one out of the way early, I guess. <laughs> Damn. Thank you. 
think she used another decoy still as a senator. Technically, you didn't fail her. I mean, you did your job as a decoy. It's unfortunate you did die, but you didn't fail the senator. It's okay. Coruscant still looks so beautiful. Oh, my boy Palpatine. Good, good for you, Windu. You better stand by that. I think this is the first time you see Padme and Yoda talk. He's also a former Jedi. Oh, thank you, Mace Windu, for telling her that myself. Ian McDermott is such a good actor. Oh, there's Jar Jar in the back. I didn't even notice him. So Master Windu is placed to protect Padme. Here we go. Here we have the introduction of Windu and... Or, my bad. Obi-Wan. Why'd I call him Windu? Huh. Obi-Wan and Anakin. See, they talk about past experiences and adventures they went on together. Kind of showing you that they're, they're friends and they're close, but you never actually get to see them do anything like that. Ten years. Man. That's between this and the Phantom Menace. There's Jar Jar. Hmm. Obi? Obi! <laughs> You'll notice that Jar Jar is less vital of a role in this film. She still calls him Annie. <laughs> oh yeah, way to pick up the girls, Anakin. He's 19 now, you don't have to call him a little boy, sweetheart.
This part's kind of awkward, seeing them, like, get angry and debate each other in front of everybody. It's like, hey, y'all are in a room with other people. Yeah, you can see the captain kind of like, oh, hey, you guys want to get on with your debate, your argument, take it to another room. Oh, look at this shot right here. Jodger's about to look at the camera. Yeah, <laughs> see that? He looks and smiles. People people took that as him kind of mocking the audience a little bit, saying, hey, I'm still here. Yeah, because it's been 10 years, my friend. You're not. They're not going to think about you every day like you did, apparently. Yeah, yeah, she was, Obi-Wan. I was pleased to see you, too. I'm digging the mullet a little more than I was on the haircut you had last film. Oh, here's Django. Wait, so Django's the bounty hunter hired to kill Padme, but he hires another bounty hunter to do it? Okay. <laughs> Quiet as a tune. I like that. Never heard that before. Yeah, I wouldn't like you watching me either, Annie. Possibly, yeah, yeah. I mean, he is the master in this situation. But Obi-Wan's not a Jedi master at this point, right? He's just a, another Jedi knight teaching uh, Padawan Anakin. God, Coruscant looks so fucking good, dude. <laughs> because of your mother. I'd be like, no, because of your mother. Sorry if you hear my chair. Nah. Yeah, everyone's got a point. The politicians can't really be trusted that well. Especially if, like, they formed a republic but never thought to have an army to protect them. So if that thing had a gun, it could just shoot her through that window. Why is it sending out these little... What are these things? Worms? Centipedes? So yeah, two of them, huh? Oh, they are ugly, too. Smart centipedes, I guess, or hiding from R2. Oh, little do you know, Anakin.
Hmm. I sense it too. Here comes the action. Bzz, bzz. Jeez, he just jumps through a window? Shouldn't that be Anakin who's doing that since he's the young, bold, and adventurous one? Was that her decoy? She got another decoy? Ooh, that had to hurt. Coruscant looks better at night than it does during the day. I don't know what species it's called, but that's the same guy that looks like Sebulba. Dang, that is a long rifle. Better line up that shot, girl. Wait, why would you shoot the droid? Why wouldn't you just shoot Obi-Wan? If you would have aimed at like two feet lower, you would have shot him in the head. Obi-Wan's free falling. RP my boy Tom Petty. Damn, Anakin's arrogant, thinking he rivals Yoda as a swordsman. Well, you wish. This part's funny. <laughs> yeah, it pulls up at the last second. Oh, they're going through a, a fiery area now. Wait, why is Anakin doing the same thing she's doing, going around each side? Like, the fire is on one side, so stay on the opposite side of it. Am I about to get electrocuted? What? Why, why didn't you just go over it? Why would you go through that? Huh. Hmm. A shortcut, you say? It's nice to see that Coruscant doesn't have a lot of traffic. Probably because they have flying cars.
And he jumps up the car. Or speed or whatever you want to call it. So he how did he know she was going to be there when he jumped? Eh, the force must have told him or something. I don't know. Ironically, I do remember seeing this film when it came out in theaters as a kid. Whew. That was a risky jump. Ugh, you see her face transform in that shot. Man, good catch, Obi-Wan. I know I would have missed that. Is that the same sound they use for the TIE Fighters? Her blaster? It sounds pretty cool. It sounds similar to the TIE Fighters, at least. Now, see, this is where I would be. In Coruscant. Down here, where the party's at, with all these other people. Oof. That crash would have killed her on impact. There's a lot of cameos in this bar scene we're about to see. Yes, use the force. Not to run. Yes, yes. Wait, is that weapon is your life? I thought attachments were forbidden. And because he's going to kill you in a few films... Damn! Homegirl to the left's got an ass. Is that football? Nah, it's like another form of it, kind of. Ooh, for a drink? I'm drinking right now, buddy. Come over here, you and we can drink together. Oh, I met Best Cameo right there. Ooh, here's Dustix. Man, those girls are eyeing Annie. They want, they want his lightsaber. Oh, reminiscence of that New Hope scene. Oh, Anthony Daniels cameo and Ahmed Buzz cameo. Yeah, I'll go back to my drinks. I don't care if it's Jedi business, but you just chopped off her hand.
Hmm. Damn, Django, you got some great timing. What'd she say? I don't understand that, but okay. And finally, we're back with the Jedi. Oh, Calm and Trevor in the back. Damn right, she better respect your judgment, Yoda. You're like 900 years old. Don't light them now, Palpatine. He would just got a little hovering chair. That's cute. Back into balance. Is it not balanced right now? What's happening with the Force? What's the scale like, Obi-Wan? They made... They made Jar Jar a representative in the, the Senate? He goes from banished from a city to bombat general to a senator's representative or something. Wait, she wants to defeat the military creation? Why? Yeah, it's been 10 years. I'd hope he'd grown up. Oh, that's cool. They're repairing the windows. I'd be thankful to be his apprentice, too. He's a good guy. Wait, wait, what? You just... Oh, God, Annie. Annie, you can't keep complaining to a girl like this. That's not how you pick them up. They don't want to hear you complain. They want you to hear them complain. You know, they casted Hayden 
only because he had like a good look with Natalie Portman. Ugh. Why not? Yeah, it makes me uncomfortable too. My queen, or senator, whatever you want to call her. Ah, oh, man, he is creepy. Hmm. That's true. R2 is going to survive all this, and he'll be with both of your kids, your grandkids. Dexter's Diner brings me back to my Lego Star Wars days. This diner looks great. Ugh, that hug though doesn't. You can kind of tell Dexter's completely digital. Oh, there's a meme. Hey, you're right, Dex. Mm, Twelve parsecs, you say? Oh, there's that guy that Obi Wan almost ran into. That's the bubble-looking guy walking out the door. rich Jedi are. He's looking at Count Dooku's uh, statue. There's a deleted scene that kind of dives in more to that conversation that I don't know why they took out.
Oh, there's Jet Lucas in the back. I met that son of a bitch many months ago. I mean that in a nice way, by the way. I'm not, like, saying that in a derogatory thing, but... Oh, man, they are just spending a lot of this movie sitting and talking. Hey, it's another reference to A New Hope. No droids to get out of here. Speaking of drinks, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drink some rum now. Ooh, you're not supposed to love people, Annie. Yep, she's right. Oof. Uh, 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 uh. That's a hard flirt tactic. You can tell she was uncomfortable with that. She's like, oh, I look like I do in your dreams. Then let's keep eating. It's cute. They all got little lightsabers. So does Yoda, too. I wish we could see more of the Jedi Temple and just explore the Jedi more. Boy, he didn't lose a planet. It wasn't there. Your arrogant-ass librarian made sure of that, I guess. You're right, Yoda. So who erased the files? Was it Saifu Dias or was it was it Count Dooku? Yeah, you meditate on that Yoda while he actually goes out there and do the dirty work. I think this is the first time you hear the love theme for Padme and Anakin. Oh, look at that. Look at that shot. Naboo looks great. Or this part of Naboo, at least. And you see R2 going upstairs, struggling. Poor little guy. I'm, I'm with you, girl. I don't think you were old enough at 14 to run a fucking planet.
That's cool. That's a cool line. Hasn't been a full scale war since the formation of the Republic. That's a possible story to explore in the future. I don't understand how forming an army will make a civil war. You already don't have an army. If one of the sides creates an army, the other side's kind of fucked. Mm-hmm. Democracy's great. Damn, bro. She just mad-dogged Anakin. And just mad-dogged him again. Interrupting him. Ooh. He came back. Ah, oh, man. Kamino's another cool looking planet because it's all water. I think it would have been interesting though if they would have had like an underwater aspect that you could explore. But maybe there, I mean, I know there's like the Mon Cal planets, uh, I forget what it's called, uh, DAC, Dock, or something like that. That's got underwater cities and whatnot you could explore in future films that we will never see. I'm as shocked as you are. Oh, are they about to sit down and talk more? Oh, maybe he is a master. <laughs> Sits down immediately and out of business. That meme. Damn, right around the Phantom Menace, he died. So Obi-Wan's playing a kind of a spy-like role saying that Saifu Dias is his master. And lying, being like, oh, that's why I'm here to come check it out. Don't mind if I do. First I've heard of this shit. Oh, look at that. That looks beautiful. They're using some real sets now. You know, Hayden said, Hayden Christensen said in the... Uh, behind the scenes stuff that one of his favorite parts of filming this was actually going to that bar because it was an actual real set compared to everything else. Oh boy, here we go. Oh God. 
Oh. Oh, fuck. It gets everywhere. Yeah, yeah, shut up. I'm a drink. Oh, yeah, he's touching her back. No, nope, too high up on the shoulder. You gotta touch the lower back. Are they about to kiss? Oh, he's just smiling weird. Oh! Oh, no, they are about to kiss. Oh, yeah. Get it, Annie. And the music stops. She's like, no, nah, I can't do this. <laughs> his, his face to her reaction is just kind of like, was it something I said? I mean, my breast stink? Why the fuck she's turning down my kiss? You gotta feel bad for Ewan in this situation, though, because he's surrounded by nothing but blue screen. No one's there. He's just walking by himself. Ooh, Boba Fett reference. Another meme right here, boys. Oh, now we're back to the love stuff. Annie and Padme. Or Padme. I don't know why I call her Padme. But Annie and Padme frolicking in the fields. Annie, how are you going to get jealous of something that happened when she was a teenager? Not even a teenager, she was 12. And he said he was, she said he was a few years older than How old was that motherfucker? Made to agree. This motherfucker just induced communism? Someone wise, oh. Yeah, dictatorship. You're right, Padme. You're that's why you're the politician. Oh, oh fuck! He just said, "Well, if it works." Oh my god! What a fucking cunt! My god! She's fallen in love with him. This dude just was like, "Hey, it works. Fuck it." <laughs> Oh, here they are, frolicking in the fields. And there he is on top of a... I don't know. I'm gonna drink more. Oh, there's a little fake little struggle. 
A Annie? Are you okay, Annie? Oh god, she really calls him Annie. Holy fuck. Oh, now they're all rolling around, frolicking in the field together, and are they about to? Are they about to make out in the field again? No. Oh, okay. Just cut to the next shot. Oh, what the hell? So they can breathe underwater. That's pretty cool. It's annoying that it would always be storming there. I, I couldn't live there if that's the case. I got to see some sun. I'm a human. We need that. Uh oh, it's my boy Daniel Logan. Oh shit! <laughs> oh, I love me some Daniel Logan. That's my boy. I hung out with him a few days at Celebration. He's such a fan favorite now because he's so interactive with the fan base. You gotta love it. He embraces the memes too. Damn, you can feel the tension in the room on this one. I like this. Ooh, he, he doesn't tell him. He's just possibly. Never heard of him. Mm hmm. Doth Tyrannist via more specific. You know what would always been kind of cool? Seeing the clones take on Django Fett. Like, how that would have gone. I like Django Fett always a little more than I liked Boba in the later films because Django, I don't know, man, he's he's a badass. And I think, personally, the game on PS2 was always really fun to play. Would have liked to see him have his own little standalone film or something. Just a thought. Another meme. My boy Daniel Logan. Good guy. Oh, flying little pear. Is that a pear? I don't know. <laughs> she didn't even chew it, just like slurped into her mouth. And we get to the uh, lavender s kind of smell of a room and very hot and heavy with the fireplace. You know, George Lucas predicted after the first film of the prequels, The Phantom Menace, that fans would not like episodes two and three. And he says he didn't. He knew fans weren't going to like episode two because of the love story. And he's absolutely right. This this kind of love dialogue is just ugh. Can't breathe. First of all, you kissed her. Don't don't put this on her. All right. Kiss not become a star. <laughs> Ah, uh, never 
never say that, boys. Never, never tell a girl, I'll do anything for you. Whatever you ask. Uh uh. No, no. Mm mm. They, they eat that shit up. It's not impossible, it's just not probable. I think I think Lucas is trying to make this like a forbidden love. They're not allowed to fall in love because the plot needs them not to, I guess, but I know he says that if they do, they suffer the ultimate consequences of falling in love, but whatever. <laughs> he just said he can't be rational. <laughs> I wish I could just wish away my feelings. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. Oh boy, George, you really should have brought in a co-writer for. Okay, to be fair, he did bring in a co-writer for this one. Someone should have wrote the screenplay. Damn it! And see, I, I hate to beat a dead horse on the love aspect of this, but it seems like this where they're just stuck in this room talking about. This love story. It's stuff like this that doesn't feel like Star Wars. It feels like I'm watching a romantic... Or a, a, a chick flick, in a way. And hey, I like some chick flicks. I'm not going to beat around the bush. A lot of Matthew McConaughey chick flicks are my thing. But this is like... Ah. I like this part when he talks to the council because he's like, Did the council have approved the creation of a clan army? And Mace Windu's like, No. Care of the old folks home. What? Mmm, so Obi-Wan knew it was him. <laughs> oh, that would have been pretty cool seeing the uh, council interrogate Django Fett. So why is y'all's ability to use the force diminished? No, Anakin's having those nightmares. Mommy. Mommy's in trouble. I that was an odd fade to the sun. Or clouds, I don't know what you want to call them. Damn, this chair squeaks like a motherfucker. Not really disturbing him, he's just looking out. See, uh, come on. Your presence is soothing. You could just say, hey, I enjoy your comfort. No, I, I'm comforted by your company or something like that. I enjoy your company. That's about it.
Yeah, I don't know why y'all didn't free your mom from slavery still. It's been all this time. You could have gone back. Y'all had the money. Sorry about that chair, boys. Got to put some WD-40 on this bitch. No, you have a choice. You're just choosing to go. Wow, this part's cool, though, because Django and Obi-Wan are about to fight. Pace picks up a little bit. We've been seeing him talk for like a solid hour now. You tell him, Daniel... Ah, oh, that's kind of cool how, like, his bullets make explosions in the ground a little bit. Almost like, like a little fire or something like that. I don't know how to explain it. Jeez, he survived that? Damn, he survived that too? Oh, a flying sidekick to the gut. And another one. Oh, and a round kick to the face. Oh, headbutt had to hurt. See, Django's actually pretty smart. He ties him up, starts flying around. Then Obi-Wan uses... Uh, platform, I don't know what you want to call it. <whistles> Man, he missed. If he would have shot, if he would have made that shot, it would have been over. I know a lot of this stuff is digital, but I like how they make it still feel like a real set and location by using like the slipperiness of the platform because of the water and the rain. Oh, okay, so Django doesn't see him, so he thinks he's dead. Okay, okay, that makes sense. He's got to do that little army crawl to get up. I'd be slipping down. I'm going to drink some more rum. i got a lot more left. I don't know about you boys, but I drink Malibu rum. I'm more of a whiskey guy, personally. I think it's probably the best drink. I haven't drank in many months, so... it's Whiskey's okay to drink because it's a very... Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Oh, he put the tracker on the ship, too. That's smart. But with whiskey, it's not as unhealthy as something like beer. It doesn't have as many calories, and it's got some sugar in it, sure. But it's overall not bad if you have a glass. Rum, though, and beer and a lot of the other drinks that you have are very high in calories. and yeah, I don't know. Not, not the greatest, in my opinion. I'm a whiskey guy by heart. Rum's good, though. Malibu rum. Rum in general, I just like. We're back to Tatooine. And poor R2's got to keep up on the back of that thing. He doesn't even like get to get on. He just has to follow. <laughs> he says, "Hokey, hokey." There's Watto. Calls him Annie too. Oh, another 
what do you know? Yeah, what did you even need her for, honestly? Yeah, that's a good story. Uh, you bought a slave and then you freed her and married her? Uh, nothing like that. True love. Uh-oh, most icely. Anything for my former slave, who I freed in a bet. No genosis. Oh yeah, this part's cool. The little sp space chase battle thing in the asteroid field around genosis. I mean, it's not really an asteroid field, it's the ring, but... Star Wars. You don't really get too caught up with all that. Oh, I love that sound. That never gets old. I loved this scene so much when I was a kid, man. And it's so cool how it it goes off and it takes a second for it to actually, you know, make the sound. I mean, sound doesn't really travel in space either way, but... It's Star Wars, you don't really get into the nitty gritty about that stuff. <clears throat> oh, okay, so he's doing like a backflip to kind of get ahead of... Well, not get behind Obi-Wan so he can... Come from behind, start firing. Get him, Dad, get him! Fire! <laughs> yeah, you hate it because you're losing, Obi-Wan. That's the only reason. I never understood when I was younger how they were basically landing every shot, yet nothing was happening to Obi-Wan's shit. And then I realized, oh, they have shields. Or maybe they don't. I mean, they just shot him right there. Use the Force, Obi Wan. Another old original trilogy kind of moment, like Empire Strikes Back when they hung out in the back of that Star Destroyer. I like the way Geonosis looks at night too, those uh, big balls of, I don't even know what you'd call them, look cool.
Hmm, so that's all Federation ships. I would have never guessed that. I mean, I knew it was Federation, like, the same one they had in The Phantom Menace, but... I thought at the end of that film, the Federation lost. I really wouldn't have thought they'd be that powerful still. I don't know, I'll drink more rum. It's important... Ah, man. Can't drink when I'm... Can't talk when I'm drinking. It's important to drink water when you drink alcohol, my friends. It keeps you hydrated and... Dehydration is what really gets you buzzed and drunk. I'm not going to say I'm not buzzed. It's obvious I am, but... Oh, C-3PO. Well, this time, instead of a little skeleton, he's gray. Wait a minute. He's working for the Lars family? Doesn't... He buys them again in A New Hope. You tell me that motherfucker Owen Lars bought the same droid twice over a few year time? Oh my gosh. Oh, I like how he avoids telling him about his mother. He's like, well, let's just go inside. Well, you know that um, the guy who's playing Owen Lars, I forget his name. He plays, uh, I forget his name as well, but he, he's in a he's in the Great Gatsby movie. Not a great movie, but he's in the one with Leonardo DiCaprio. He's reprising his role in the new Obi-Wan series. I think you mean to say Shmi was your wife. Huh. Well, no, she's still alive at this point, so I don't want to be a dick. Oh, y'all lost 26? Boy, that's your wife. You're giving up faster than he is. I oddly like this part. I, I like them being on Tatooine. I, I enjoyed that little... That scene right there of them talking about it. It felt... I guess because they're on Tatooine, it felt like Star Wars. But even this part right here, where it's the shadows talking, I like this. I don't know if they're kissing or just hugging. Oh, hugging. But shots like this are really nice too. Kind of a wide angle shot of the whole thing. and Not a lot of master shots with the prequels for some reason. You only really get that with, uh, I think, Empire Strikes Back. Because that's Irvin Kirshner's style. And Lucas isn't a really big fan of establishing a master shot like that so soon, I guess. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's badass. The twin sons in the background. Ah, yeah, I like this one too. Him talking to the Jawas. Their little... I don't know what they call them in the background. Then we go to Geonosis, another sand-like planet, but mostly full of bugs and underground stuff. My god, how many? How long are we into this film? An hour and 15 minutes and we still haven't seen the main villain, Count Dooku.
All right, nothing's happening. I'm going to drink more rum. Oh, here he is. Man, he he's a vice is a vicious guy. I wonder if Dooku can sense Obi Wan. Maybe not if he's not looking for it, but you always think that they would be able to sense each other or something. Obi-Wan should have dropped there, right behind Count Dooku, stabbed him in the chest, looked at everyone else and been like, hello there. Oh, was Tusken Raiders, oh, that's a cool shot. You got the two moons, actually, not just two suns, two moons in the back. Oh, damn, they must have, like, whipped her or something. She does not look good. She calls him Annie, too. Yeah, yeah, he does. Ponytail's not a great feat, but... gonna lie guys this scene doesn't really pull the emotional cord on me like it should yeah that's uh, just a uh, eh, I don't know man the lighting is really good though because of the fireplace it's kind of a dark scenery, only focusing on the faces. It's, it's good lighting. And then it turns to like a really, really dark music. Mmm, he just chopped off both their heads. That was cool. You hear Qui Gon here.
He's in terrible pain, but no one ever follows up on this with like, Hey, are you okay, by the way? We felt disturbance in the forest a few days ago. to go see his mommy. Yeah, no offense, Obi-Wan. He's been spending most of his time complaining about you. Not really confident that he'd follow your lead on a lot of things. Y'all ever see the Robot Chicken episode of this part where he's... Owen's like, I guess that makes him Little Orphan Annie. <laughs> oh, she's got some blue milk. This is uh, an original trilogy set. From a new hope. Good observation, Annie. You definitely could have, but dollar short and a day late, as they say, my friend. Here, I'll drink to her death, my friend. Ooh, that's some foreshadowing right there for the next film. Why are you blaming Obi Wan? He didn't do any. He literally did nothing to cause the death of your mother, and you're blaming him. Killed who? Sand people. Oh no. But the women. And the children too. Damn. Dark motherfucker. Ah, uh, yeah, this part's cringe as fuck, dude. The fact that she stayed with him after he just admitted to killing women and children. And it's okay to kill the people that killed your mom. I mean, no one's gonna act like that. But she's just like, to be angry is to be human. No, he killed women and children. And yeah, you're a Jedi. You let your anger get the best of you. This is something that you definitely should have discussed with a Jedi Master... That's a nice line right there. Hmm. 
And that does pull on the heart a little bit. Don't get on your knees, Andy. You hate sand. Oh, he's picking it up. This is where Ryan Johnson would come in and say, well, the greatest teacher failure is. We'll discuss that film when we get to it. Oh, New Hope style message. So Jordy comes again. Yeah, I don't know why Padme thinks that her and Annie are going to be able to take out this droid army. You know, Padme's using selective hearing. He didn't just say protect her. He, he literally said before that is to stay there. Stay where you are. They just did they just steal C three PO? I mean I know Annie built him and all, but oh, all right. Oh, this is such an obvious ploy to get Jar Jar guilt tripped into doing it. <laughs> also, this is another thing that makes no sense. Why would they? Why would the Senate vote to give him emergency powers to create a clone army, but they wouldn't vote to create a clone army? Like, if they know the reason they're giving him emergency powers is to create the clone army, why not just vote to say, "Yeah, he's here." Anyway, let's listen to Dooku and Obi Wan. Dooku just straight up lied.
It would have been nice to have seen Dooku and Qui-Gon Jinn interact in the last film. Maybe when they were on Coruscant debating the Jedi and politics or something. I don't know. Something to give the character more depth. Just because you're arrogant about this Obi-Wan and didn't tell the other Jedi, probably could have saved a lot of lives. I wonder if Dooku ever would turn on Palpatine. Breaking, doing that same rule two kind of thing. Oh, Jar Jar. Are they cheering Jar Jar Binks? Oh, man, Lucas really was a big advocate of saying fuck you to the fans for not liking them. I love democracy. I love the Republic. Yeah, you know, that's what every dictator says. Yeah, put me in the power and control of everything. Once we're done with this shit, I'll drop it. See, that's another thing I would have liked to see. Yoda talking to the Kaminoanians. Uh, I, I don't know what they call them, but the people on Kamino. The, the cloners talking to them about the clone army and everything. Seeing how he would have interacted with them and the clones. Didn't Obi-Wan say droids can't think earlier or something?
That's creepy. Seeing the those bugs moving to the wall and everything. Ooh, they just got like squished. And he just cut that dude in half. Or that bug. Oh man, the digital effects in this one haven't aged too well. That's another bad thing about these films being filmed digitally, episodes 2 and 3 is that they'll never be able to be remastered in 4K. They can be upscaled to 4K, but they'll never be native 4K. I think he's trying to make you fall. <sighs> Damn, that robot's got some red eyes too. Trying to be evil, I guess. He's got those little rockets on the side. Why didn't he use that to go up the stairs? Use your judo. You didn't. You got taken down. Oh man, it's starting to rain over here. In Texas, not in the movie. Alright, we're back. Had to wait for the rain to pass a little bit. Oh, he got his head knocked off. Man, thank God the proportions of the droid head fit C-3PO's. And vice versa. Ah, oh, he's finally using the Force to take out all the... What are they called again? Geonosians? The bugs, basically? This part always perplexed me when I was younger. I always thought, like... This is what messed up his hand. But he really just got trapped. And this part's weird to me. The lava flowing in, almost killing Padme. I never understood it. Oh man, this film's um pretty boring. Now R two is gonna say Padme. Uh, good, good for you, R two. You're smart. Always saving everybody. Oh, damn, that's a hard drop. I'd break her ankles. Ooh, cut his lightsaber in half. That's... That's not good. Oh, again? What happened the first time? Oh, 
You see what happens when you want to go do things on your own, Padme? You get captured. Oh, there's Django. All right, this is where the film gets a little more interesting. We get some action going. We're at the Gian Ocean Arena. I'm a little buzzed. I think I don't know if I want to pour me some more whiskey or rum. I think I'm buzzed enough. You got to I mean, I'm not drunk for sure, but definitely loose feeling. Oh, she loves him. You see, this is a really powerful moment between Padme and Anakin because we've never really seen a Jedi fall in love like this. And this is ultimately the downfall of uh, Anakin Skywalker as a character. <laughs> oh, George. Dang, so she's just falling in love with him because they're about to die. It's kind of like a, well, now that I'm dying, you are kind of cute. Oh. Mm, so cute. Thank God they stopped kissing before Obi Wan could see him. Is that is that Anakin? Is he kissing the senator? What the fuck is he doing? You could see the disappointment in his eyes, just eyeing him from a distance. What are you doing here? My idiot of an apprentice. Oh, she's already on that, on that getting out of the shackles scene, or plan. Ah! You tell him, Obi-Wan. He's been bitching about you the entire movie anyway. It's kind of hard to believe you guys were close. Man, they do a lot of... They go all out for these executions. Everybody shows up. They bring the family and the kids. And... Remember fighting those things on uh, Felucia from Battlefront 2, the 05 one? They're still pretty ugly to this day. Ooh! Oh, he just bit that dude. Oh! Oh, they say that in every film! Except for The Last Jedi, because fuck you! Ah, she's literally on top of things. You're funny. You're punny, Obi-Wan. Good movement. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. He's, he's out of it. That is a deep cut. Got to put some peroxide on that bitch. The cut, not the girl. Ha! 
How'd he fall off? He just kind of went to the... Uh, Anakin must have never been to a rodeo. Ooh, she's going to kick it. Yep. Yeah. Huh. What happened to the other guy by Viceroy in the first movie, The Phantom Menace? Whatever happened to him? Oh, it just knocked down the entire thing like that? That's a strong looking... Whatever that bug's called. Alright, Obi-Wan's got a staff. Anakin, you need to use the force to calm that beast down. I don't know why she's so worried about get, getting that other handcuff off. It really doesn't matter in that kind of situation. No, that beast looks good still. 20 years later. Well, it hasn't been 20 years late. What is it? 2019 now. This film was released in 03. No, no, no. 02. Filmed in 01. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty close. Hot damn, bro. That's been a minute. That's pretty cool, though. One beast kills the other. She jumps from that high of a distance and this doesn't damage her legs at all. Why would you throw that at it, Obi-Wan? You just lost your only weapon. Use that thing to keep your distance. Jab and move. Jab and move. Alright, you're both on... All three of you are on this beast. Now what's going to happen? You're not really in a position of power. Yeah, she will die. Sadness is going to kill her. She'll simply lose the will to live. Droidicas seem to be the best thing for the uh, Separatists. I don't know why they don't just mass produce those. And here he comes. Mace Windu. You know, comes out with a purple lightsaber simply because... He asked for one. You know how badass of a reveal that probably was? Seeing him with the purple lightsaber, the only one on, like, you see in the screens, or in the films. Hmm. The introduction of the super battle droids. Pretty cool that he can deflect the blaster bolts in the air. Oh, man. I always found it weird that, like, in episode one, Lucas was like, Jedi can cut through these droids like butter. But in this one, they just get wrecked, basically, by all these droids. I know it's the sheer number, but still, it's kind of like, well, Jedi Order can't be that intimidating. Oh, that dude just jumped into that shot. It's cool seeing Anakin with the green lightsaber, changing it up. There's Daniel Logan. Mm, C-3PO. Obi-Wan and Mace Windu back to back. Would have been nice to see Mace Windu take on someone like Count Dooku. Calm and Trevor. 
Gets taken out by Django, like nothing. Pretty badass how he like flips his gun to him, just puts it back. Huh. This part's cool. Django taking on the the big beast and then takes on a uh, Mace Windu. Dang, one shot, one kill. That was cool. Oh, right off with the head. And you can see, like, the actual head of him kind of fall out real quick. He calls them Jedi dogs. Dogs are a thing in the Star Wars universe, I guess. Get Fisto! Nice, nice force push. He gets a nice little smile into, oh, Kit Fisto's such a pure-hearted person. Ha 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 ha! Remember they referenced that earlier in the film? Aggressive negotiations, huh? Yeah, now that he's got a lightsaber, you're nothing, bro. He's about to chop your legs up. One, two. Oh, that's it. And right with the head. Literally and metaphorically. See, two Jedi just died right there. Another one. Ha! That super battle droid just knocked one over, knocked another battle droid out, and was like, eh, I'm going to do what I got to do. So there's like, what, 13, maybe 15 Jedi left out of all the ones that showed up? It's kind of embarrassing. No, I disagree. I don't think it's worthy recognition. I would be disappointed. Use the force, my Jedi friends. Just everybody force push at once. Ah, the clones are here to come and defend the Jedi in a movie called Attack of the Clones. You heard General Yoda make that perimeter. I love those little laser guns that they got on the side of their ships. There's Shock T, who dies like four different times in Revenge of the Sith. Fun fact, the clones 
are also completely digital. They did not even build like any outfits or costumes, any armor for the clone troopers. It was all digital. Droid's dream? My boy Daniel again. You know what's ironic about this shot too is that he didn't even know what he was filming in that scene. He didn't know that Jango Fett had died in that scene prior. He just thought he was filming his head to the helmet, I guess. I mean, there, there is really no context for him. Very good call indeed. That's a big fundamental problem with this war that we have is that there's no tension. You don't feel any emotional connection to clones or the droids because they're both mass produced. It's not until the Clone Wars show that you actually feel a connection to the clones and they have an emotional connection with them. Samuel Jackson's best when he's yelling. See, this battle is so giant, big, so many, like, clones and droids going at it, but there's just such an lack of, em of emotional connection to either of them. Oof, that was a cool explosion. Now your master's the one who set it up, my friend. It's also kind of cool that they were planning the Death Star this far ahead. Like, what would have happened if the Separatists had built the Death Star while the Jedi were still around? How would the Jedi have stopped it? The Force, maybe?
I always liked how they took out that like one starship, and that crashes and like takes out so like there's like a big dust cloud that follows. Boom. And then, like, the clones and the droids are fighting in that dust. It's Dooku! Nah, no, you can't, Obi-Wan. I'm sorry. Dooku is like one of the greatest swordsmen who have ever lived, and you and Anakin aren't the cream of the crap when it comes to that. The only reason y'all beat him in the third one is because plot armor. Like even by the expanded universe standards, Dooku would have wrecked both of them easily. He's a master of uh, the lightsaber form, Makashi. She would do her duty. Yeah. Yeah, she would. You wanna know why, Annie? I don't think she loves you, not playing. If I was Yoda, I would have gone, picked up Windu, and Fisto, and Kiati Mundi, and we would have gone for Dooku all together. I like how their ship gets destroyed right after they land. Oh, Anakin, you're so stupid. Got hit with force lightning. It'd be cool if Dooku had different moves than than Sidious, like he learned some different stuff as well. But I do like that in this film, for the first time you see that lightsabers can block force lightning. And you also see a curved hilt. He probably could do better. He just got done fighting a lot, though. You were up on the sidelines chilling, you old asshole. Christopher Lee is such a great actor, though. Right away. Let's go get him. Yeah, can you need to get up? I'm just sitting there whining. Oof. Right in the arm and the leg. Yeah, that's definitely gonna burn and hurt. That was a weird jump. That's such a cringe. I am a slow learner. I like when he gets both lightsabers, but then this duel gets really cringy when he cuts out the lights because it gets into a rave. Like right here. They're just kind of holding their lightsabers up above their heads. The lighting's cool. But you can't see anything. Like, what's up with the editing on this one? What the fuck is going on? 
Okay, there we go. Now I can see them fight. What? He just, like, held his arm out to the right for Dooku to spin and cut upwards. Oh. Oh, Annie. Oh, yeah, Yoda's ready to fuck you up, Dooku. You see that little pose he got? He's like, mmm. Bringing down the roof now. <laughs> Yoda struggles with, like, three rocks. Ray can lift all of them like nothing. Well, he's a Sith. I'd hope you would feel the dark side in him. Even you. I love that Yoka uses... Did I call him Yoka? I love that Yoda uses telekinesis in this scene. I, I really wish in the prequels we would have explored more force powers instead of just force lightning and this telekinesis really, but there's so many possibilities you have with the force. In this scene right here, having a Sith Lord and a very powerful Jedi Master like Yoda in battle, you could have explored so many different aspects of the force with this instead of just telekinesis and that's it. And I know back when this film came out, it was badass to see Yoda fight for the first time. But this lightsaber battle is, um, odd. Look at him, he's just jumping around. Spinning like crazy. Dropping that whole structure on both of them. And instead of just rolling over to help him take out Dooku, they just laid there and did nothing. <laughs> I'm playing. It's just... What could have been? Dang, he is powerful in the force, so just lifting that, man, that whole thing, man. Man, I can't use an Obi-Wan's leg as a pillow. That's sweet. Fire at the ship! Fire at the ship! Why don't you take the ship that you just landed on to go take that one out? Does that one have rockets? The last one didn't. So technically Yoda didn't really lose that fight against Dooku, but definitely didn't win it. This part's cool though, because Dooku meets up with Sidious. I mean, anything with the bad guys in the prequels always appeals to me for some reason. Just learning about the dark side and different aspects of the Force is so interesting, and I feel like it really wasn't explored enough. They're on a different part of Coruscant in this one, and the sun's setting, and it's kind of red and dark. Ah, it's such a nice... Look at that. Look at that part. Oh, my God. And then this one right here. See the red? The dark tone to it? Just kind of Sith-like. Ah. I wonder if they're going to implement anything from this movie into Rise of the Skywalker, or Rise of Skywalker. I'm going to listen to the dialogue, see if there's anything that could possibly hint at something in the future for Palpatine. Very unlikely, but still. Like I said, I haven't seen this film in many years. And I can I can see why. Hmm. 
Mm, this is where you learn he's Lord Tyrannus. Oh, that that revealed and said nothing. All right. Oh, he did tell the Jedi. Dang. So you just kind of shoved off what Dooku said because he's on the dark side? Mmm, bad move. I like this part where he's like, victory isn't really, this isn't a victory. This is a cool shot too, of all the clones getting ready for war. See, this should have been the first film in the prequels. The Phantom Menace takes place 10 years before this, and the characters are so vastly different, basically. Mainly your main character, Anakin. That could have just been a spin-off film, for all we know. This should have been the very first one, and then the second film deals with the actual Clone Wars. And how that impacts the galaxy. Because the third one's the end of the Clone War. And I like the Imperial March song that goes with it. Damn it, I have sobered up. That is annoying. And now we're back to the Lovey Dovey song. Oh, they're getting married. I wonder who's marrying them. Would have been cool if it was the governor of Naboo. I like his beard. Oh, this guy looks like he's got a beard. Oh, Anakin's little roby hand. Oh, Annie, you got your robot hand? And they're gonna kiss. Oh, see on the deal. I think this is the last shot of the movie. Feels, oh yeah, they're turning to look at the sun, so that's gotta be it. Yep, directed by George Lucas. Screenplay by George Lucas and Jonathan Hale's so story by George Lucas. So you wrote the screen, ah, oh my god. Produced by Rick McCollum, executive producer George Lucas. I want to see who edited the film. Was it Ben Burt again? Hang on. Edited. Editor and sound designer Ben Burt. Yep. Well, my friends, that was Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones. Easily my least favorite film out of the franchise. And, yeah. Looking at it many years later, I still feel like it does not hold up too great as a film. Pacing, yet again, is an issue. A lot of talking, which, hey, talking is fine. There's a lot of dramatic films that are nothing but talking. If you've ever seen the movie uh, 12 Angry Men, they literally spend the entire time in one room talking. But there's not a lot of character connection that you have here. You understand Anakin's fall in Revenge of the Sith, but in this one, it's kind of just, I don't know. I, I don't feel like this is a film that has aged great. I understand why it wasn't received too well when it re released. Is it the worst out of the franchise? Possibly. Yeah, possibly. Is it the worst film of all time? Absolutely not. But the visuals are still pretty great to this day. They hold up. This was the first digital film ever. But man, I, I just... 
think this one missed the mark, but Lucas knew that. This is one of the ones where Lucas knew going in, people weren't going to like it, and he still did it anyways. And I think that was just him kind of saying, I got to tell a story the way I want to tell it. It's not going to be the best story in this one, but it's part of the story. I'm not going to say I respect it because I completely disagree with it. I, I don't really understand why he wrote the story and the screenplay. I think he should have just written the story and directed and then let Jonathan Hales write the screenplay or even someone else different. I don't really know what Jonathan brought into this one, but yeah, that was Star Wars Attack of the Clones. Leave your comments below. What do you think about Attack of the Clones? Almost 20 years later, in a few years, three years from now, it'll be 20 years old. It's 17 years old right now. And fans look back at the prequels a lot more fondly, but when I, I think when they do that, they mainly look at Revenge of the Sith and possibly The Phantom Menace. And this one just, man, the love scenes, the, the plot and the story of it, the narrative, it just kind of doesn't logically make sense. But yeah, I, not many praises I can give this. The action from time to time is entertaining, but not a lot of emotional connections in this film to the characters or anything that's going on which is understandable because it's meant just to be telling a story but you're supposed to care about Anakin and his fall to the dark side and you see glimpses of that but I lack any care for it personally but tell me your thoughts what do you think about Star Wars Attack of the Clones episode 2 17 years later rewatching it now with me today what do you feel about the film what do you like about it what do you dislike about it and just give me your thoughts below. How do you think that went? How do you think the film commentary went? Did you have to drink with me? Because I had to drink to get a little bit through this film. I'm sober now, so I kind of... <laughs> kind of am not as fond of the film as I guess I would have been while I was buzzed. But I don't know. Tell me your thoughts below. I'm Star Wars Only. Hope you guys enjoyed this film commentary. The next one we have is Revenge of the Sith. This is when the films start getting better and a lot more interesting. So the next... Four to five film commentaries that we're going to have are going to be a lot more interesting in my opinion. But tell me your thoughts below about Star Wars Attack of the Clones and the film commentary that we had today. Hope you guys enjoyed the film. Hope you guys enjoyed listening to me talk about the film. I'll see you all next time and may the force be with you always.